Hello everyone, and welcome back to more, uh, Stel well, welcome back to Stellaris. Uh, Synthetic Dawn, the expansion just, uh, broke today. And we will be playing as the Cardodin Intelligence for this, um, for this playthrough. The Cardodin Intelligence, or the Cardodin, are an are actually very peaceful machineries. I did a bio biology for all of these. All of the people that I upgraded, I have done a biology for, so yeah. Uh, are actually very peaceful race. On their home planet, even on their home planet of Karth, they allowed the humans to live, albeit in confined spaces. But still, they could not bring themselves to destroy all organic li life within the planet. They feel that having uh, the cartos still around actually helps them study biological life a lot better than other machine races tend to do. Uh, so any most machine races would destroy their biological hosts. All the cartodins really care. All the cartodins, all the cartodin really care about is the ability to get more and more intelligent. Usually. They wouldn't attack people, or would usually they will not attack first. However, with tech advantage over most of their rivals, they tend to do a good job at fighting off aggressors. So the Carter Intelligence uh, will start with factory overclocking, which gives me leader leader level cap plus one and leader experience gain plus ten percent. The experience gain for Leaders who do not die is kind of stupid. They're a gestalt um, consciousness. They cannot use them. Uh, any of that can use full orbital bombardment. Rulers are immortal. Native pops are not affected by happiness and will not join factions. Native pops cannot survive in non gestalt consciousness empires. They get plus one monthly influence and they have a core sector system of two. I actually am pretty happy with that. They're machines. Their habitability is plus 200%. In other words, they can be anywhere. Uh, leader recruitment cost is one plus one hundred percent, and they are immortal. They have logic engines. They have a society, physics, and engineering output of plus ten percent. They are luxurious because they are intelligent. Uh, so their build cost is actually increased by 10, 20 percent. They have a repurposed hardware. Um. This is only because of mechanical reasons that I put the repurposed hardware in. Leader experience gained minus 25%. This is something that isn't too much of a bother to immortal machines. They don't need to gain a lot of experience in a short period of time. Yeah. Um, I don't need to bother with that. They have an enhanced memory, which gives me a leader level cap of plus two. So yeah, they have a leader level cap of plus three on top of what they are already. Uh, their bio trophy is the Cartos. I haven't made a biology for them. And the Cartos are fleeting. They die quicker than most uh, species. They're fairly slow beaters. They are intelligent. They're the ones that created the intelligence. And they are industrious. As I said, they did create the Cartodin intelligence. Um, FTL methods. I really enjoy wormhole. Hyperspace is probably what it, it's actually the easiest, and warp travel is just shit. And avians, of course. And since the Cartodin intelligence knows that lasers are the best weapons, there are. Uh, yeah, lasers are the best weapons. There is no denying that. So they decided, fuck all the other things. Let's just go over lasers. Cause lasers. In this game, they will, no matter what, fight the Ventago Decimators. The Ventago Decimators hate all other Xenos and, decide, and feel that they are better than everyone else. That their god, their creator, is the one who knows all and no one should be able be allowed to live the Tukna are 
fanatically pacifistic. They will not attack anyone. They believe everyone should be allowed to be spiritualistic. They believe everyone should have a belief of something uh, and that they should not be destroyed for no reason whatsoever. We have Derentarian slave traders. These are just a slave trade nation. They even have a syncretic evolution. They have enslaved the other race within their borders. Uh, and they are incredibly authoritarian. We have the Gristarius Entity. The Gristarius Entity are a hive mind. They, have an, they are a very, very intelligent hive mind and tend to try to avoid fighting unless they have to. Unlike other race, uh, unlike other hive minds. We have the Leantares Pious Conclave. These guys are incredibly spiritualistic and believe in the equality for all other beings. We have the Mole Men. The Mole Men are xenophobic militaristic bastards. They think everyone should die. They do not take prisoners. They will kill you. The Ensilu Collective. This is your basic every day um, hive mind. Not much is known about them because they tend to kill every single life, every other life that they have ever met. They go around eating everything. If you meet them, run the fuck away. The Dracarnus Interstellar Empire are an authoritarian, fanatic, militaristic... Oh, I had two fanatic militaristics. Fuck! I didn't mean that. Um. Hmm. I guess I'll edit that. I wasn't wanting to have two of the same. Um. Never know. There's nothing that changes, so it's fine. No, okay, that's better. Uh, still says the same. Uh, these guys, the Dracarnus Interstellar Empire, like the Mole Men, just are a fanatic militaristic. They love war. They will always go to war. Uh, they only respect powers. Well, they only respect power. They used to be dragons on their own planet. They are incredibly strong. They are incredibly dis uh, industrious. They aren't very adaptive though. They're non-adaptive actually. And finally we have the Gondari Stellar Alliance. These guys love to build. They, like the Kartos, will probably eventually become machines. They feel machines are the pinnacle of evolution. Anyway, let's start with the Cartodans. Uh, I'm going to try and roleplay this and try and keep all the keep as much bi biological life alive as possible. I don't want any more than forty percent. Um, so. In game terms, rogue servitors start with two organic pops. Um, caring for organic pops in this way fulfills low level directives. This manifests as a servitor morale empire modifier, giving uh, 0.5 monthly influence and a plus 10% resource output for every 10% of the population that have bio trophy status. Max plus 2 and plus 40. So maximum. 40% biotrophy population you want for your empire. You want to have at least 60% of the empire 
full of the card of the intelligence, which I'll try to do. Try to do incredibly uh, well. I'll also uh, have them be pretty much solely focused on um, research. So I'll try to avoid building buildings that do not have research upgrades. Anyway, let's start, shall we? Yeah. No! Fuck's sake! Fucking mouse! Ah! Anyway, I'll see you all in a second, second episode. Thank you, everyone, and have fun.